Well, hello to all of my 7th graders who are watching this PowerPoint, and maybe their parents or siblings who are joining in. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is. I hope that you are healthy and staying away from the coronavirus. The best thing you can do is to stay home, as the CDC has told us. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about biology today, starting with the topic of genetics. You may already have some of this in your notes. I'm going to do a short recap for you, and hopefully that's going to be helpful. Remember, genetics is a study of heredity and genes. Um, heredity is um, what you inherit from your parents. So let's say um, you have a great uncle who dies um, and you inherit all of his money. I don't know how much money that is, um, but you got it from him. Just like you got your genes from your parents. Um, these genes give you characteristics that make you into the person who you are. Remember, cells can go through two different um, types of division. The first you see on the picture to the left, it's called mitosis. Mitosis is where you make an exact genetic copy of yourself. Meiosis is where you make cells different. And this is important because mitosis creates the exact same cell. Remember, if we had a heart cell, let's say, uh, you wouldn't want the heart cell to try and change. You want a heart cell. So if you, if you needed another one, you'd want it to go through mitosis. You wouldn't want a heart cell becoming a lung cell. You'd want a heart cell becoming the exact same heart cell as it was. However, um, whereas in meiosis, um, you want it to change. So you don't want to be an exact genetic copy of your parents. Looking into the mirror, you see an exact same um, image of how your dad was when he was 12 or 13. Uh, that'd be kind of scary. And mitosis is asexual, and meiosis is sexual reproduction. And that's why um, mitosis and meiosis uh, differ. Um, during meiosis, you have a formed zygote, a fertilized cell. And uh, this zygote contains all the genetic information that makes you who you are, um, all of your DNA. When DNA needs to be copied, it goes through replication. Um, replication is just an easy um, scientific way of saying, like duplicate, except we don't say duplicate, because um, duplicate uh, means something different in biology. Um, but the idea is the same. DNA makes another strand of itself, and um, the process keeps going. Ribosomes use this information to produce proteins in your cell. These proteins do lots of different jobs. Transcription is where DNA is made into RNA. RNA is a very simple version of the code, um, and RNA changes this into proteins through translation. Think of, and I, um, I wanted you to think about this in this light. Consider you're building a house. DNA would be like the blueprint to your house. It tells you everything you need to know. It tells you my house needs to have um, such and such of room size. It needs to have this type of wood and this type of beam. Um, the blueprint tells all of that. Whereas the RNA um, is kind of like a contractor. It only knows a section of something. It would be like your electrician. Your electrician only knows what to do with the outlets, the wiring. Um, maybe he hangs a couple of ceiling fans, but that's about it. And he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily pour the foundation or uh, saw the wood. Um, but he's, like, he, he's, he's over all the polypeptides or the proteins. Um, those things which actually do the building. So you might have the blueprint, the electrical contractor, and then like the uh, scrub who's working under him um, who does all the wiring. That's like the protein. The protein needs to be um, translated from RNA. We talked about Gregor Mendel, um, or maybe we didn't. 
Um, but if we didn't, Gregor Mendel's the father of genetics. He was a priest, um, I believe, in some eastern country in Europe. Um, that's not coming to me right now. He discovered that things take different um, forms, called alleles. He worked with pea plants. He said, hey, why are some pea plants green and some pea plants yellow? He determined that uh, there were traits that were dominant, traits that were recessive, and these um, dominant and recessive would go on to play a very key role in, gen in genetics. You see, dominant is a trait that comes out. Uh, recessive is a trait that kind of hides away. Recessive only shows when there's other recessive traits. Dominant shows all the time it's present. And this is called the law of dominance, where there's a dominant trait, you're going to see dominant form. So you consider that there's two dominant genes, so the, the phenotype, um, or what it looks like, is dominant. You have one dominant, one recessive gene. You're still going to show the uh, dominant gene. Well, why? Why, do why doesn't it blend red and yellow? Um, well, that's because uh, the dominant gene is present. Only when there's two recessive genes uh, does the recessive trait come out. Homozygous means the same. Heterozygous means different. Genotype means the letters of the gene. The phenotype describes the appearance of a gene. Uh, the SpongeBob worksheet will have more um, on that. Now, this is where um, I definitely know we did not get uh, so pay attention very closely. Mendel says um, that each trait is inherited separately, unrelated to other alleles. So, uh, you ever heard somebody say, I got everything from my mother, from my eyes, to my hair, to my height? Um, well, that's that could be true, but that was random. It's not like your mother's genes just somehow um, only got to you. And your dad's genes didn't have anything to do with that. Um, the law of independent assortment says every allele that you have uh, got to you randomly. And so it's not like you inherited all your genes in one slew of information. Um, you got them completely independently of each other. So you may have inherited both your eye color and your hair color from your mother, but that doesn't mean they came together. All it means is that you inherited both from your mother. Um, you have this uh, Punnett square to the right, and it may confuse you, but don't let it confuse you. Over here you have um, yellow peas and green peas. Now, you can see that this yellow is a dominant, um, capital Y, uh, and then green is this lowercase y, lowercase allele. All you do is you take that capital Y and you give it to these two. Lowercase y, you give it to these two. Um, right here, you give to these two, and here, you give to these two. And you combine these and it helps you predict exactly what kind of offspring are going to be possible. Consider if you cross a heterozygous or different um, dominant and recessive with a homozygous recessive, you're going to have a 2 in 4 chance. So there's 4 boxes here and 2 of them are heterozygous dominant and two of them are homozygous recessive. And so you're going to have a two in four chance of having a yellow um, pea plant and a two in four chance of having a green pea plant. It helps us visual visualize our possibilities. And this is very useful. Consider a pedigree chart. A pedigree chart helps us understand how traits move through the various generations. And this is done with diseases like sickle cell anemia. So sickle cell anemia is a disease particularly of African descent where someone's cells are an odd shape. Um, 
And so instead of being a nice circle, they are kind of like a horseshoe. And it's very bad to have. Um, but it's a recessive disease. And so here you see um, two parents. Uh, the blank color means it's dominant. The recessive trait here um, is... Uh, is the sickle cell anemia in this case and you can see how uh, the generations work so this is like great grandpa and all their kids and all their kids and all their kids um, and typically it includes so here's here's like a female they use circles to re represent females um, typically it includes their husbands as well but in this case it did not but it's very useful how did this trait go through uh, the various generations. And so, you know, my grandpa, you know, let's say had sickle cell anemia. Uh, well, why, why do I have it too when my parents didn't have it? Well, we can determine that genetically. Um, this is used a lot of times with something like color blindness. And you ever heard that it skips a generation? Well, that can be true. And you can find more about that in your textbook under the pedigree charts. All right, um, and we are done this section. Um, it is your homework to do section review 11.2, of course, um, because we are learning virtually. I can't give you any quizzes. That's kind of nice, um, but you do have to do all of the homework. So section review 11.2, all of the questions is for homework, and on your information sheet, I have more about how to submit that. Well, Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Now it's on to lesson 11.3.